Hi, my name is Andrea Vosrochfort, and I am the Assistant Professor of Clarinet at Texas A&M University, Kingsville. Um, when I moved to South Texas, I saw the talent of the students who had made Allstate in Texas on contrabass clarinet, on bass clarinet, and I knew that I needed to start a bass clarinet choir. So a lot of times in public schools, auxiliary instruments are introduced with little instruction in collegiate ensembles, and students are expected to be proficient, and they often have to learn on the job. So this results in limited registers, inconsistent sound concepts, and being the only auxiliary instrument, they don't have a model for tone production. So I decided to create opportunities for chamber music and collaboration to challenge the students beyond the literature scope and band and to take the experience even further for my university students by allowing them the opportunity to coach and interact with interested high school students in these ensembles. So this addresses the shortage of instruments that often is a problem for establishing bass clarinet choirs or using E-flat clarinet choir or E-flat clarinet-like instrument ensembles. So it becomes an excellent recruiting opportunity as high school students who are also given little instruction when jumping to these instruments, despite the fact that it is a great way forward to all state ensembles, it helps them to be able to work with the university and identify with students who attend the university and create important relationships. So I find that all of these students learn better in groups and one of my very first bass clarinet lessons for a bass clarinet choir is to take them into the altissimo register without fear, using fake fingerings and fast air. And this helps build confidence, and then we launch into partials or controlled squeaking, so I can encourage them to make the sounds they've been terrified of making on accident in rehearsal, causing them to bite and shut down their reeds. So by learning to squeak on purpose, they learn more about the resonance of their instrument, and they become more fearless and capable of taking risks instead of assuming they'll fail and trying to protect themselves and doing more damage to their sound. So that lesson plan I actually included in our auxiliary pedagogy resources. Um, other things I've found are that working together in a large ensemble allows the more experienced students to partner with younger students within the university ensemble and to mentor students at our satellite high school choirs. So we try to visit these campuses twice a month we had two um, in our first year, and we include them in our auxiliary clarinet festival choir performance to incentivize their attendance and engagement for recruitment. So we focus on teaching as many of our students are music education majors, and I believe they need to feel confident teaching all of the clarinets to be competitive in their field. And we also invite our non-clarinetists from Woodwinds One to join us for a bass clarinet intro session, allowing our university students to practice teaching on non-clarinetists before they get to coach high school students so they feel a little more confident. All of this is just building experience. Another obstacle towards the bass clarinet choir is actually the repertoire. And the way we've managed that has been by adapting clarinet quartets or choir pieces for like instruments. But we've also looked at saxophone trios, quartets, or quintets. Um, and that way, you can easily add in E-flat clarinets or um, in the situation where you're using an AATB alto alto tenor, tenor bass or SATB soprano alto tenor bass. And you can also adapt that to use the contra clarinets if that's something that you have available and you want to give those students more opportunities. Luckily, the pioneering composing and commissioning work of Jonathan Russell of Squonk and Sarah Watts are increasing the repertoire exponentially. And it's also a great opportunity to encourage student composers. In this case, we have a student from Glendale Community College, Kincaid Rabb, who wrote a piece, Bridges of Light, that's gonna be featured on today's program. Um, the presentation we are offering you today will also involve testimonials by university students involved in the program, a short demonstration of the chamber ensembles we run at Texas A&M University Kingsville, a bass clarinet choir collaboration with Glendale Community College students of a premier arrangement by Jonathan Russell, a repertoire list, and additional pedagogical resources from Dr. Stephanie Gardner and myself. So I hope you enjoy. Thanks again. Hello. My name is Stephanie Gardner, and I teach clarinet at Glendale Community College in Glendale, Arizona. Our clarinet majors and music education majors have the opportunity to play in our bass clarinet choir. 
This ensemble allows clarinet majors to explore bass clarinet and music education majors who have completed clarinet methods to gain additional skills in the clarinet family. Bass clarinet is quite approachable in that you don't have to cover holes to play and the embouchure is not as particular as with soprano clarinet. So those students whose primary instrument isn't the clarinet can still learn about the clarinet and how the instrument works. Our clarinet majors get valuable auxiliary instrument experience that will make them more flexible in their careers both as performers and educators. Most of our music is comprised of works by John Russell, arrangements by Sarah Watts, student and alumni compositions and clarinet choir and quartet works adapted for bass clarinet choir. I tried to pair clarinet majors with non-majors to make it an educational experience for everyone. The clarinet majors have the opportunity to teach someone bass clarinet and the non-majors learn important information for their future careers as music educators. Students love this exciting new ensemble. We rehearse weekly on Friday afternoons and is definitely a highlight of the week. sized animals that look similar to a wild boar. They have mainly short, coarse, salt and pepper colored hair, short legs, and a pig-like nose. Have lena of long, sharp canine teeth that protrude from the jaws about an inch. The jaws and tusks are adapted for crushing and defending against predators.
found in the deserts of southwest Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, southward through Mexico and Central America. The average group size is 10 or less, but a few birds have known to number up to 53 animals. Each group defends a territory which includes their sleeping and feeding areas. They eat a variety of native plant foods such as agorbane, mesquite beans, and prickly bear, as well as roots. Historically, this complex of plants was a mixture of bushes, Bulgarian forests, and grassland. But by looking at this mistake, South Texas has suffered from land fragmentation that has significantly altered wildlife habitats. Many are starting to question what is happening to all the wildlife species in this region.
Thank you.